thanks once again uh, Siki, uh, for you know extending this opportunity to me and also to all the esteemed panelists for this uh, session in turf 2020 this year uh, which is mostly looking at you know strengthening the sports landscape in states of the country and in this session we are going to particularly focus on jharkhand and uh, as you all are aware jharkhand uh, could be called one of the treasure troves in terms of sports persons and overall contribution of sport uh, to the Indian sporting landscape and it has a rich legacy starting way back in the 1920s uh, during the then British rule with Jaipal Singh Munda who was India's first Olympic captain in men's hockey winning the gold medal in the Amsterdam Olympics to our current panelist with us right now Deepika uh, a commonwealth gold medalist and also a Padma Shri awardee uh, we also have MS Dhoni from Ranchi who's I do not need to reiterate the laurels that he has brought to the sport in the country including the world cup win of 2011 uh, and it's a way of life in this state uh, which is a young state of 20 years since its formation in november 20, 2000 and with a predominantly tribal population sports definitely is a way of life uh, however uh, i mean as uh, we proceed ahead with the session we would like to hear more from all the panelists including madam secretary that how sports could be better integrated into the everyday life of people how sports could be you know looked into in a much more holistic manner including pot potential investments and partnerships with uh, you know organizations and countries who are much more ahead in terms of nurturing sports person from grassroots and also look at how you know the the state government particularly uh, under the leadership of the chief minister can engage in a very concerted manner with both sports persons, industry houses, as well as, you know, partner countries to drive the agenda of sports forward in the state in the next four to five years. Uh, to begin with, I once again extend my welcome to all the esteemed panelists. And I would like to also uh, give a brief introduction to all of you, um, uh, starting with the Secretary Madam. So, Ms. Pooja Singhal, she heads the industry, tourism, art and culture, sports and youth affairs department in the government of Jharkhand. And uh, she is one, uh, she's kind of the driving force right now in the chief minister's developmental agenda, looking at, you know, driving sport, tourism and sports as two flagship sectors and industry, obviously, in terms of a socioeconomic sustainable development in the state of Jharkhand. Uh, we have Deepika uh, with us, uh, Deepika Kumari, heading from Rachi, and uh, has been as Pankaji rightly mentioned uh, you can ca call the queen of Jharkhand right now in the international arena she has already qualified for next year's olympics in tokyo and uh, recently also we congratulate her on her recent marriage to Atanu who is also going to compete for the men's olympics in the shooting discipline and by that sense uh, we do wish them the best of luck going forward and we hope to hear from Deepika also on her journey and how she kind of you know understands the, the need of sports persons especially in archery and in other disciplines and how you know the government could play a role of a facilitator uh, we have luisa with us uh, luisa lino oliveira she is a trade commissioner to the embassy of portugal in india and she has an she has a very interesting background in sports herself and she has been the national volleyball team captain for portugal and her research and her PhD also focuses on the role of sports in shaping children and child development in the society. We hope to hear from Luisa in detail a bit more about what her research findings have a significance in our country. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Gitesh Agarwal, who is right now the Trade and Investment Commissioner, Queensland, and represents the government of Australia and India. And Queensland, as we all know, is a interesting place in Australia with an abundance of nature and natural reserves, as well as also a hub for potential trade and investment opportunities. And uh, we hope to hear from you, Gitesh, also uh, in the coming few minutes. And lastly, uh, we also have with us Mr. Mukul Chaudhary. Uh, Mukul Chaudhary is right now the CEO of Jamshedpur Football Club, which plays in the Indian uh, Soccer League, ISL. Uh, which is right now under process in Goa, this current edition. And Mukul uh, Ji has been also instrumental in kind of developing a lot many football initiatives across the country, including his earlier stints with a couple of in individuals in Bombay. And uh, he not only heads the Jamshedpur FC, but also kind of looks and oversees the entire operations of the Tata sporting initiatives based out of Jamshedpur. 
happy to have you on board mr choudhury and we we'll look forward to hearing from you uh, so i would like to invite uh, madam secretary to sort of open the panel with her remarks uh, for the session um thank you arindam uh, from the uh, government of jharkhand i'd like to thank vicky to give us this opportunity to uh, mention what uh, the government of jharkhand and particularly our uh, chief minister has the vision for uh, sports uh, i'd like to also welcome uh, the trade commissioner embassy of portugal uh, the trade commissioner queensland and of course mukul ji and our own dipika so uh, very quickly uh, in jharkhand just like arindam has mentioned sports is a way of life it's not um, that since we are the part of the government of jharkhand so we would say it like that it is it has always been like that and it is a way of life and our chief minister has the uh, very clear vision that we need to make jharkhand into a sporting economy in a lot of states we are seeing like in orissa we are seeing and in other states we are seeing that a lot of push is being given to sports and the chief minister's mandate is that one we should have our sports person given uh, to be given all the facilities to be given all the support to be given the best of infrastructure and secondly to promote talent scouting at uh, age which is as young as possible starting from baby leagues and the third of course which uh, fiki is focusing is uh, sports manufacturing to promote jharkhand as a sports manufacturing hub which is my mandate as an industry secretary so right now we have four uh, sports which are uh, high potential uh, games in jharkhand which is hockey football archery and athletics but of course there is talent scouting in all other games as well i'd like to put across three major points why jharkhand is a destination for investment in sports and why jharkhand is a place from where we'll get most and most members of future uh, olympic teams one is that we just took out a new sports policy it is being uh, launched by the chief minister very soon the sports policy envisages that our high potential games will be encouraged we will have sports as a viable career option it should not be that the sports persons are playing sports but they are looking for opportunities to earn their bread and butter from other sources we would like to encourage sports as a way of life just like cricket is that all right this is this is going to be your viable career option then all the way till the village level up to the state level go for uh, talent scouting and go for bringing about social change through sports giving the best of uh, infrastructure and support to our coaches and supporting our sports persons beyond their sporting life so that if somebody retires even after that there should be a support for those sports persons so that they continue to work in an arena which is close to their heart which is something an ancillary related to sports and very importantly promoting sports tourism now pankaj ji is aware they are going to be very soon um, joining us as knowledge partners in industry department in which promoting sports and promoting tourism is a very important uh, segment now in athletics in hockey uh, in archery and in football uh, there is a very strong sporting culture the under 17 uh, women's world cup which was supposed to happen next year and has been postponed uh almost uh, a major strength of that team comes from jharkhand and a sports policy would like to uh, give special trainings would like to develop schools and infrastructures would like to have a synchronization with the education department to catch them young would like to develop special sports university now if you google you will find that we have something called a khel gaon which was made for national games and it is probably the only place in the country where you will have seven international standard stadiums at one place uh, i would like uh, especially australia and, and uh, portugal uh, trade commissioners to pay attention It's because the 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 chief minister's vision is that we use this exceedingly good infrastructure which we have to develop it into a possible sports university and uh, uh, right now we are running 
many academies there of different different sporting disciplines but we would like to encourage it like a proper sports university give out degrees and encourage the entire ecosystem under sports to be uh, developed we would like to have a sports uh, excellence center in each division we have five divisions and also give a database we have already launched a portal to have database of all our sports persons now our mega sports complex once it sets up as a sporting as a sports university and sporting sciences is what uh, the chief minister always insists we would uh, like to even get in touch with um, the victoria university national institute of sports australia and others and even portugal because football just like portugal and spain and um, the western uh, europe is very close to the heart of people of jharkhand and there's immense talent so we would like to collaborate more on that plus i would just like to very quickly since it's on sports manufacturing also and we have quite a few manufacturers listening to this webinar we have one of the most most large hearted policy in terms of manufacturing we give a 20 percent um, incentive uh, in your uh, capital uh, investment we give uh, weightage to investment made in plant and machinery as well we give subsidies and incentives on gst on interest and if, if you are an msme we promote it even more and employment subsidy epf um, any kind of gsts sgst relaxations labor relaxations and even uh, electricity duty and power tariff we yeah, have a very, very, very uh, large hearted policy. I would uh, like to take this opportunity to request Vicky for a larger webinar and even we can meet in person to promote uh, sporting manuf uh, sports uh, manufacturing in uh, Jharkhand. We are also uh, bringing up a new policy in March 2021, wherein the Chief Minister Sir has given us a clear mandate to encourage more and more manufacturing to happen uh, here and make it like a sports hub. I think yesterday also during the award ceremony, he uh, mentioned that. I'll put up a link, uh, I'll send it across to Pankaji on our um, uh, uh, industrial investment promotion policy. So my uh, concluding remarks would be that we have a huge talent pool. We have a very sensitive and a very uh, forward looking chief minister who wants to build sports and tourism as the uh, backbone of Jharkhand economy. We have huge infrastructure and you want to develop it even further and we have an intent on supporting our sports manufacturing as well so i really hope that in a couple of years couple of years we'll have a system in jharkhand where it will be a preferred destination not just for uh, investment but also for talent scouting and we'll be able to make our mark in the olympics and we'll be able to be one of the most uh, uh, forward uh, looking states in terms of sports um, that is what uh, I just wanted to post across. Thank you, Arindam. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for your uh, insightful remarks and also laying uh, you know, a broader perspective on what government is looking at in terms of sports and sports for development, and also tying in with the investment perspective. Uh, I would next uh, like to invite Deepika. Uh, Deepika, uh, if you may please share your insights and good be fascinating to also hear your kind of journey in the state to an international uh, world uh, world uh, number one archer and also now, now that you are one of the most experienced archers around in the country uh, what do you think uh, should be done you know in a better structured way and how can there be synergy between all stakeholders in the sporting arena to bring more dipikas out of the state um i think uh jo mera entire journey hai usme maine yahi uh, seekha hai ki sports uh, aap ye nahi keh sakte ki you know 4 saal mein koi bachcha perform karke dega ya fir uh, छह साल में परफॉर्म करके देगा तो आप कभी भी गेस्ट नहीं कर सकते आपको उसके लिए ट्रेन करना पड़ता है और उसके लिए आपको फैसिलिटीज चाहिए 
प्राप्त होती है ऐसे लोग चाहिए होते हैं जो आपको गाइड कर सके एक सही वे में बिकॉज कभी कभी क्या हो जाता है कि हम गेम तो खेल रहे हैं बट हम गेम में क्या करना चाहिए वो हमें पता नहीं होता सो इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि फैसिलिटीज के साथ साथ ऐसे लोग भी चाहिए एक एक्सपीरियंस लोग आपको चाहिए गाइड करने वाले लोग चाहिए जो आपको एक सही राह दिखा सके और एग्जैक्टली exactly आपको नो you स्पोर्ट्स know, के बारे में बता सके और जहाँ तक कि झारखंड का सवाल है झारखंड बहुत अच्छा कर रही है स्पोर्ट्स को लेकर अभी जब मैंने स्टार्ट किया था तब से लेके काफी कुछ इम्प्रूव हो गया है तब सिर्फ टाटा आर्चरी एकेडमी था जो टाटा स्टील के अंडर था अभी काफी इम्प्रूव हो रहे हैं झारखंड में भी एकेडमी है जो यू नो नया बनी है और नए नए बच्चों को लेके आ रहे हैं सो आई वुड सजेस्ट की और छोटे बच्चे से स्टार्ट करे लाइक एट ईयर्स और नाइन ईयर्स के बच्चे से स्टार्ट करें चाहे वो कोई भी गेम क्यों ना हो चाहे आर्चरी हो या कोई भी स्पोर्ट्स क्यों ना हो छोटे बच्चे से डेवलप करें और इक्विपमेंट के साथ साथ मैं कहूँगी कि जो मेंटली सपोर्ट होता है वो स्पोर्ट्स के लिए बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट होता है सो so, फैसिलिटीज एक तरफ होती है इक्विपमेंट एक तरफ होता है बट एक मेंटल सपोर्ट भी आई थिंक उसमें भी ज़्यादा ध्यान देने की जरूरत है एक यू नो एकेडमी हो या फिर कोई भी एक इंस्ट्राचर स्ट्रक्चर हो जो स्पोर्ट्स प्लेयर्स को रेडी कर रहे हैं तो इट्स अ साइकोलॉजी बेस भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि बच्चों को दे ताकि यू नो इन फ्यूचर वो वो स्ट्रगल जो होती है प्लेयर्स को गेम में कंपटीशन में या फिर पर्सनल लेवल पर वो चीज वो यू नो डील कर सके अपनी मेंटली सो so, ये सब चीजें हैं एंड झारखंड तो अभी बहुत अच्छा कर रही है एंड आई होप कि आगे और भी ऐसे और अच्छे एकेडमीज बने जहाँ पे बच्चे और भी लेके आए और उनको स्टार्टिंग से ट्रेन करना शुरू करें हेलो अरिंदम जी यू आर ऑन हाय लुइजा हाय लुइजा या thanks deepika first of all for sharing your insights and just for uh, the uh, uh, for sake of luisa i'll just kind of summarize deepika's uh, kind of opening remarks so deepika rightly um, you know drawing on for her her own experiences in charkan she feels that you know it is important to catch them young so it is important to kind of you know tap into the talent pool at a very early age especially across schools and academies and focus more on grassroots to begin with and then identify the talent who could actually be on the long run and then be groomed you know at every stage in a proper manner and she also feels that it is very important that uh, any form of academy or support should integrate a mental support or a psychology factor because that's one of the key areas of intervention and support that is required for sports person at a competitive level especially when you are competing with you know in international competitions and national competition and uh, she is a, a kind of confident that the road ahead is going to be far better because uh, from the time she started off in her archery career she feels that you know there has been a lot of progress in the state in terms of infrastructure and opportunities for sports persons so definitely uh, you know there has to be much more synergy ahead and she hopes that uh, we'll have much more and many more dipikas coming around from the state of jharkhand अरिंदम जी मैं एक और चीज ऐड करना चाहूंगी प्लीज जैसे कि क्या होता है हमारे जैसे हमारे कंट्री में इतना यू नो इतना फैसिलिटीज नहीं मिलती है तो लोग उम्मीद करते हैं यू नो स्पोर्ट्स से कि हम फैसिलिटीज दे रहे हैं तो बहुत जल्दी हमें मेडल मिले यू नो इट्स इट्स ह्यूमन नेचर सो आई बिलीव कि एक स्पोर्ट्स में बहुत हार्डवर्क और कंसंट्रेशन चाहिए जो बहुत ही गिने चुने प्लेयर्स को यू नो जल्दी वो कैच कर पाते हैं कुछ बच्चे ऐसे होते हैं जो जल्दी यू नो कैच नहीं कर पाते उनको थोड़ा समझने के लिए टाइम मिलता है तो मैं ये बोलना चाहूंगी कि उनको वक्त दे क्योंकि बहुत सारे बच्चे होते हैं जो जल्दी यू नो उनमें एक अलग सा ही टैलेंट होता है और कुछ बच्चों को बहुत ज्यादा टाइम लगता है तो मैं ये बोलना चाहूंगी कि वो एकेडमी हो या कुछ भी हो उन्हें वक्त दिया जाए उस स्पोर्ट्स के लिए ताकि वो स्पोर्ट्स को अच्छे से समझे और फिर वो उसे क्या करना है कैसे अपने आप को यू नो और अचीव बन अचीव करना है उस लेवल में और कैसे यू नो लाइक 
समझना है उस गेम को समझने के लिए ना टाइम चाहिए होता है तो मैं ये बोलूंगी कि उनको टाइम दे यू नो उनको जल्दी हड़बड़ाने में ज्यादा पुश ना करे कि मुझे मेडल चाहिए या फिर जल्दी अचीव करो तुम ये नहीं कर पा रहे तो उनको थोड़ा वक्त दे ताकि वो आराम से अपने गेम को इंजॉय कर सके और परफॉर्म कर सके थैंक यू थैंक यू दीपिका एंड इट दिज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट यू नो एज अ कंट्री वी ऑलवेज ट्राइव ऑन एक्सपेक्टेशन बी इट आर क्रिकेट मैचेज और बी इट एनी अदर काइंड ऑफ स्पोर्टिंग मीट्स दैट वी हैव ऑफन सीन दैट वी ऑफन एक्सपेक्ट अ लॉट फ्रॉम अ स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन बट वॉट दीपिका इज सजेस्टिंग दैट यू नो वी नीड टू गिव गिव दम द प्रॉपर टाइम टू काइंड ऑफ डिलीवर बिकॉज नॉट एवरी स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन इज गोइंग टू रिएक्ट और काइंड ऑफ परफॉर्म इन अ वेरी यू नो काइंड ऑफ सेम काइंड ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस लेवल एवरी ईयर so we need to kind of nurture them and be them be there with them by their side even in the most difficult of circumstances and uh, just referring to this i would like to draw all of your attention to the film that is made on dipika which is which is there on netflix uh, it's a very interesting uh, story that is shown on dipika's life and where dipika herself is featured jahan pe uh, dipika uh, shares her pain after you know kind of losing out in the rio olympics and the fact that the entire media's attention in india was on her and that expectation of a billion people that you know here is going to be our next gold medalist in archery and how she has kind of you know coped with that entire uh, expectation mismatch that happened but uh, turned around uh, very strong with the fact that she is again making it very big in the tokyo olympics ahead uh, on this note uh, i would like to invite uh, luisa to kind of share your remarks uh, on the session and also on the topic yes on this you know we've been talking about this uh, a lot in portugal we are only 10 million people so but we always want medals and now we are focusing in you know we are changing the focus from the medals to the process because so the not only athletes get very sad and depressed all the country that is expecting so much gets depressed so we thought that we should change the focus and more than want medals we just want to have athletes going to the olympics and then do their best enjoy of course sometimes they fall down sometimes a lot of things happen we do have a, a very famous um canoeing canoeer his name is fernando pimenta he keeps being world champion you know k1 i think k1 and some others and he lost uh, the gold medal in rio and everybody starts started thinking about it because it seems it was the only gold medal that he, that he missed all the others he did and so there are so many factors in the olympics and in the world championships that what we have to to focus i think not only um, in olympic athletes but in all athletes is the process people have excellence is not to be excellent in sports is not to be excellent in results only it's to be excellent on the attitude uh, excellent toward referees towards coach people uh, you know like colleagues that that um, that law that lose when they win everything has to be as supposed to be excellent i think that's why sometimes people get to get so you know so enthusiastic about sports because it takes so much of yourself to do something in the right way uh, that you really get involved so i think it's important you know to focus on the process and to be happy the medals will come you know so it's i think it's the most important not only because of the athletes but, but also because of the country and of all the future athletes you know i think that is that is quite important you're mute hi yeah i also as secretary madam pointed out in terms of you know the state kind of looking actively towards institutional partnerships uh, technical support and any form of you know investments and also uh, kind of you could say active engagement with countries or even institutions who are actively into sports and sporting disciplines any kind of you know perspective that you would like to offer on that Yes you know in Portugal it's common to say that the best coaches should be uh, placed in their youngest um, with the youngest children you know usually we have the best coaches in adult for adults for the for the for the for the big teams but it's in during the childhood that the athlete is made and so you, you know as you know the neurophysiology 
you know, there are steps for the motor development. If you do not develop one of the qualities in its full potential and start trying to develop another quality, then the first quality will never develop, it will never be developed in all its potential. So it's very important to have very good coaches in the, for the youngest children. One of the examples that I, I like to, 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 you know, to refer is, if you put a child like a five, 10, 10 years old, you know, just running, doing aerobic effort, you know, what will happen to the heart is that the heart will be very thick. And when the child grows, you know, there will be um, cardi cardiac insufficiency because when they are small, they should do other kind of efforts. So I think this is one of the reasons why it is so important to have good coaches in the, you know, in the for, for young, for the young children. Um, one also one of the I think Portugal is is pretty good on um, in, you know in the area of um, of sport of coach uh, education. Uh, in the seventies we had an important revolution in Portugal and the country did open very much to the world. We had our own school of sport, but then we went. Some people went to the United States to get the best that the United States had to teach. Some people went to the Soviet Union. Some went to the, to East Germany. Some went to France again. And after a few years, they all came back and we had the, the formal National uh, Institute of Sports. You know, we got all these people inside and it was very, very, very interesting to, you know, to, it was very interesting to leave those times. I went to the university on the 80s, uh, in the middle of the 80s, and you could see all the life that was in the university. So many, so many inputs from so many states, from so many sides. And for example, another interesting thing is, um, when we talk about equestrian sports in Europe, um, some European countries forgot all the traditional knowledge that was coming from from behind of us, um, and they just they were only scientific. Just science was the only thing that they were using for either for athletes, for horses, and for everything, and they lost what we have learned for thousands thousands of years. So now what is happening? Because Portugal is a little bit different, I think. Portugal and India have a lot of things in common, especially on attitude. You know, people are very creative. People solve problems every single day. You know, sometimes they do not follow always the, you know, the expected rules, but they always try to solve a problem. And I think we have some things um, in common. So what is happen now, happening now in the equestrian sport is that we have people coming from other countries of Europe trying to learn what they forgot before because of science so you know because we we did we were you know careful enough to keep those knowledges so i think this is one of the reasons why portugal is doing so well in sports is because of the education of the of the professionals in sports um, i'd like to think about cristiano ronaldo he's 35 and he has you know almost no injuries and myself, of course, I'm not Cristiano, but you know, I was a volleyball player, practiced every day, you know, playing games every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I have no problems with my knees, and I was in the middle, the one that jumps all the time. So, and I still have no problems, you know. So, I think it's one of the reasons is because we did have good coaches. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks, Lisa, for uh, the perspective that you brought from Portugal and how probably you know some of those can be adapted at the local level, uh, you know, starting very young, early across the schools. Uh, I, uh, as we kind of uh, have a brief time left, so I quickly move to Jitesh and then uh, to Mukulji. Yeah, Jitesh, please. Thank you, Arindam. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mukulja. Good afternoon, Deepika. Yeah, my compatriot, Louisa. Mukul. And of course, afternoon. thank you for inviting us over. Just to get the context, uh, so we are uh, Queensland. Uh, the northeastern part of Australia, but almost a quarter of the country. And with India, we have a $10.2 billion relationship. And uh, Mokul, you took off Tata Steel, and quite a bit of Tata Steel uh, is uh, connected to Queensland in multiple ways. It's a wonderful topic and very close to my heart as a father of young children. Uh, just to give another connect to Queensland, some of the legends of sports that come from our side are Alan Border uh, in cricket, Matthew Hayden. Ian Haley, Shane Watson, Michelle Johnson, to Michael Castro. Of course, in golf, you have Greg Norman, Kathy Freeman in athletics, and Stephanie Rice in swimming as well as Pat Rafter. We're also home to Gabba, 
And uh, coincidentally, uh, Queensland's company Populous designed the world's largest stadium of motor and endoblock. Mm -hmm. I've had the pleasure of visiting Jharkhand about two years ago when Mr. Raghubar Das was the chief minister. We had an engagement with Jharkhand at that time for both mining and a potential sports engagement at the university level. A sport is both universal and variously defined. Uh, it's traditionally seen as focused on competitive and rule-based physical competition that require exercise and skill and, and, and includes uh, any form of physical activity but it's also a function, it's a lever and a partner in delivering social, economic and health, as well as community benefits. It promotes social inclusion, it, ends, it enhances our sense of connection and, and you know, it, it builds healthy and active communities. I just want to say what government does, uh, what universities can do and what corporates can do. Of course, all this has to be underpinned by mental resilience and natural talent and fine tuning of that talent, which will lead to wins and celebration of human spirit in the country. Uh, for Queenslanders, it, it sport is social, it's recreational, it's competitive, it's elite. Uh, it can be many things, but it's part of the fabric of the identity. Uh, Queensland government uh, sport and recreation strategy looks at sports for creating jobs, a uh, strong economy. It looks at sport for keeping communities safe, Queensland is healthy. And as Louisa was uh, also saying, and so was Deepika, giving all children a great start, and at the end of the day, being a responsive government. I must mention a specific initiative of the government at Queensland, which is the Queensland Academy of Sport, which is the state's leading high performance sports environment. And what it does is it, it gives, it supports Queensland elite athletes to access to expert knowledge, high performance coaching, and specialist support services. Of course, as Deepika kept alluding to world class facilities. Uh, the QAS has grown significantly since its initial beginnings. It supports more than 600 athletes across 24 different sports at individual scholarship places. It has leaders in areas of physical performance, uh, performance science, performance health, personal development, research. And, and the result is fantastic. It's brought 233 medals from each of the Olympic campaigns. It's brought 132 medals from Paralympic campaigns. And of course, it's brought in 454 medals from Commonwealth cam uh, campaigns. Uh, as you may remember, Brisbane, uh, sorry, Gold Coast in Queensland hosted the 2018 Commonwealth Games, and Tiki uh, did uh, accompany me with the dedication to the same. Uh, a number of Australia's uh, famous sports icons have gone through QS, uh, such as Susie Neal, Karen Perkins, uh, and Jamil Doyer. Uh, 2019 saw uh, almost crowning of 26 world championships, and uh, appointing the world champion so now, a, um, Arian Titmus as the uh, you know face of the academy. This year, I must also mention the role of the universities: uh, Port Queensland University of Technology, University of Queensland, Griffith University, University of Sunshine Coast, and Bond. They are sporting centers of excellence. In fact, their centers were used during Commonwealth Games for hosting the athletes as their athletes' village for practicing. Uh, they home, they're home to the uh, School of Human Movement, Nutrition Sciences. We have engagements on sports science with India, sports law, which is taught in general, uh, sports management, sports design. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, the, the, the University of Elite uh, Sports people at Queensland the University of Technology, the School of Elite Sports, it boasts uh, uh, quite a large plethora uh, of uh, interventions for um, the combination of sports, elite, elite training, and Alzheimer's. That's a very new kind of research being done. Griffith, in fact, is uh, got a, um, uh, it involves almost 55 Olympians. So what we're speaking is look at how we can work with the state to bring in the best that we can in science, design, uh, academic collaborations, and elite athletes performance enhancement. Thank you so much, Arinda. Thanks, thanks, Gitesh, for your insights. And I think definitely, uh, Secretary, Madam, and the government of Jharkhand would be very interested. Uh, multiple ways in which Australia could, you know, partner, especially Queensland. And just to give a brief background to it, uh, in the month of June, uh, the High Commissioner of Australia to India, uh, he and the Chief Minister also had an online conversation. And the three areas that were actually notified. In conversation where you know there could be 
to kind of you know uh, where the sports department and the industry department could work jointly with Queensland and other provinces of Australia ahead. Uh, we do have finally Mukulji, uh, Mukulji, if you could share with from your perspective the work that Tata Steel has kind of you know done for advancement of not only football but also archery and also hockey and particularly placing itself in Jharkhand for such a long time. I remember TFA in its early days and the way it has built Indian football and now the kind of contribution to archery and hockey and how you think you know industry and government could work very closely on sports uh, bringing in much more synergy that is required. Thanks Arindam, thanks a lot. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, you are, you are. Yes, thanks. So I uh, represent Tata Steel and one is very proud of it. Uh, just to share the numbers in terms of, just to put it in perspective, uh, we have Tata Football Academy, which was started long back. Uh, rather our relationship with sports and promoting sports per se goes down to almost a century and uh, in the uh, past basically one has uh, not only uh, supported a, a variety of sports uh, right from a uh, Prem Cham Degra in, um, uh, in uh, bodybuilding to Bichendri Paul in mountaineering and everything in between you name the cricketers right from Ravi Shastri and many more many many more even Sabra Ganguly for that matter so all of these have been part of us as far as Jharkhand is concerned one is uh, Tata Football Academy has been right here, as Arindam has mentioned, for last over little 30 over, over 30 years. And uh, we have produced over 150 odd uh, national players. Uh, we have archery, which has been big with us. Uh, we have 12 Olympians who have basically represented uh, Deepika being here herself. Uh, and you have Atanu, who are number one of uh, India right now. And just to share last Rio Olympics, we have three representations from Tata Archery Academy. Uh, out of the six or, or eight who uh, six who represented India, so that's a big number to talk about in terms of statistics. Now we have stepped into hockey two years back, and recent past uh, a year back we also launched a high performance center for uh, the sports science center very much here, which is I think one of its kind uh, in the eastern part of the country. So this is something uh, which Tata's have been doing all this while, and Tata Steel has always been on the forefront when it comes to promoting sports and facilitating sports, right from infrastructure to supporting sports person. Uh, coming back to uh, the uh, points that uh, uh, Deepika had mentioned, I think I uh, think it is very much true that you know grassroots is where we need to work on. And Lucia had accented, uh, Lucia had accented this a little bit. Uh, I think it's very very important that we uh, have a young uh, talent uh, being treated in a certain manner, giving them a formal education the way they need it. Uh, but as uh, Deepika had put it in a slightly more easier manner, I would just say that, you know, typically you have to see to it that your young talent has fun when, and they engage with the sport more enjoying it. And only if they enjoy it and have fun, will they stick around with the sport. And if they stick around with the sport, they'll surely make it big in the sport. So that's how you should be treating it. And therefore, as the, uh, Lusa had said, it's important that you have a very educated and uh, trained staff to take them along, hold their hands and see to it that they are part of the journey to help them reach the excellence level that we want to. Uh, as far as Jharkhand is concerned, we have tremendous raw talent and uh, it's been proved in every single line of sport, particularly if you ask me cricket and you have talking about archery, football, everywhere in hockey as well. And these are the focus sports as uh, Honorable Secretary has mentioned. And that's really, really very heartening to hear what Honorable Secretary had mentioned in terms of uh, the kind of development plan she has for the state. I think uh, it's not very far when we actually see the state growing the way it is. And uh, all this while we are saying that we are doing this in Jamshedpur, it's very much a part of Jharkhand and it's a great contributor to intern sports, so to say, uh, in all ways. And uh, in many ways, we could only get bigger and better and with uh, the kind of promise that we show in terms of a roadmap that Nam had just mentioned, I think it will um, will make India proud going forward as a state. So I think uh, that's from me, and I wish everybody all the best. Thanks. Thanks, Mukulji. Uh, yeah, you summed it up pretty well. And uh, I think we do have three to four minutes, so I'll just take a couple of minutes. So I guess this has been a heartening discussion to also get multiple perspectives from a policymaker, from someone who has been running football operations for one of the leading academies in the country, Mukulji, from, from both Luisa and uh, Jitesh, and also definitely Deepika, the sports person's perspective from the state of Jharkhand. Uh, I do feel that, you know, going forward, uh, considering that there is a kind of deep interest and intent, which is very important when.
when we talk about you know integrating any kind of policy making into practice and that's There, as evident from what uh, kind of take this conversation, uh, how better uh, some of these things could be taken forward in a concerted manner. Uh, just imagine, and I go. Yeah, Secretary, ma'am, uh, if you could conclude with a couple of lines at your end. Uh, I think uh, there were some uh, disturbances. Uh, so uh, we're almost time, and uh, I would thank everyone. And also, uh, uh, Arindam, were you asking me to say something? I, I lost I connection for about a minute. Mr. Pankat Singh, hope you are there. Uh, would you? Yeah, uh, we were just kind of summing up the intercession, and it would be great to sort of have the concluding couple of Hello, am I audible now? In just a minute, Deepika, firstly, I'd like to say yes, ki we will be taking you. care of all our sports person and like Louisa had said and Gitesh had said, the government oh. intends to catch Since, them uh, young. Or to baby league, but Deepika, you have said that 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 you have said really thank Louisa and Gitesh for the wonderful ideas of um, what Louisa said regarding uh, catching youngest kids for their motor development and focus be shifted from medals to process. And like Jitesh said that in the Queensland Academy of Sports, I was very intrigued by something called the sports law and the sports design because it looks like a very large intervention. And definitely we'd like to connect separately uh, on this, uh, Jitesh. And uh, thank you, Mukulji, for everything which the Tata uh, Football Academy and the uh, football and the other uh, institutes have been doing for Jharkhand and bringing laurels to Jharkhand and um, uh, India and thank you Arindam.